Hello everyone. My name is Daniel Kuisters and I would like to thank the organizers of Eurocrypt 2021 for giving me the opportunity to present our paper called C Minion Symmetric Encryption Based on Toffoli Gates over Large Finite Fields. This is joint work with Christoph Dobrauni, Lorenzo Gassi, and Anna Guinin. Now, C Minion is a cipher defined over large finite fields. And its main motivation is to minimize the number of multiplications. So let me just start by giving an overview of why this optimization goal is important. To this end, consider the problem of multi-party computation. In multi-party computation, there are n parties, p1 up to pn, and each of these parties has an input xi. And the goal is to jointly evaluate a function of these xi called small f. And importantly, there should not be a trusted third party that is involved, but rather the parties should communicate amongst each other. And there are some other constraints, namely that each party wants to keep their own input xi secret. And each party learns nothing apart from what can be inferred, inferred from the output y. There exist a number of protocols realizing uh, multi-party computation. And for a subset of these protocols, the following two properties hold. Namely, nonlinear operations are expensive and affine operations are cheap. And by expensive, I mean expensive relative to the affine operations. Examples of such protocols include Yao's garbled circuit protocol, with the free XOR optimization. And in this protocol, the function f is represented as a Boolean circuit comprised of a number of gates. And these gates are garbled. Now, it doesn't really matter what garbling means, but what is important is that the garbling of an XOR gate is cheap because it involves some simple additions, whereas the garbling of an AND gate is expensive because it requires calls to symmetric primitives. And there's the GMW protocol. And again, in this protocol, small f is represented as a Boolean circuit. And the inputs to small f are shared amongst the parties. Evaluation of an XOR gate involves some local computation, so it's cheap. Whereas the evaluation of an AND gate requires communication between the parties, so it's expensive. Suppose now that P1 up to Pn want to compute a symmetric encryption function, called E in this case, which depends on a key k and an input x. Now there are many ways that this E can be implemented. For example, there could be two parties where one party has the key and the other has the input, or maybe the keys are shared. But what is important is that we are now looking at the case that small f equals this E. In traditional symmetric ciphers, um, design decisions were made based on, say, your laptop as a computing environment. And the gates in your laptop are implemented in CMOS, where an XOR gate is, say, two or three times larger than an AND gate, which is, I would say, comparable. Whereas in the protocols of the previous slide, the difference between the nonlinear and the linear operations are quite large. So this has led to a class of low multiplicative complexity ciphers where people have really tried to minimize the number of nonlinear operations, in particular the multiplications. In the tables that you see here, you see a number of such uh, ciphers in existence. I don't claim that this is an exhaustive list, but it's just to give you an idea of what people have been doing. Uh, what these, these ciphers, uh, do not have in common, or maybe what the difference is, is that basically some of these ciphers are defined over bits, whereas others are defined over prime fields, others are defined over binary fields, and some are defined over both. And it turns out because this field is relatively new that uh, 
designs are not as well understood as these traditional uh, designs. So many or some of these ciphers at least have been broken by attacks. So where does CMinion come in? Well, it fits right here. Namely, it's defined over both prime fields and binary fields. And with CMinion, we wanted to give a um, an entire suite of, of say, building blocks that make up an encryption functionality. So that means a mode, a permutation, the round functions that make up this permutation, a key schedule, etc. And we were motivated by permutation-based cryptography, as I will show you later. And it turns out that CMinion is actually quite competitive if the key schedule, which turns out to be quite heavy, can be computed during an offline phase. So for example, if E is computed uh, by two parties, so in a two-party computation setting, where one party computes the key and the other has the input. So in the following figure, you see a number of ciphers, including CMinion, and the number of multiplications that they have. So on the x-axis, you see plotted the variable t, which corresponds to the number of elements that, sh that should be encrypted, so the number of plain text, basically. And on the y-axis is the number of multiplications. And as you can see, CMinion is in blue. CMinion performs quite well. And our closest competitor in terms of uh, minimizing the number of multiplications turns out to be Hades Mimsy. So how did we achieve such a, a low multiplication count? Well, in order to explain that, I will go over uh, the building blocks that make up CMinion. So first of all, um, the mode that we use in CMinion is based on Farfalle. So what you see in this picture is the Farfalle mode. And Farfalle is actually defined over just bits. And there are a number of important takeaways here. Well, first, uh, you, you see that there are a number of, of permutations involved, PB, PC, PD, and PE. And many of them can be computed in, in parallel. So this has a, a positive impact on, say, the, the end gate depth of a circuit implementing this, this mode. And there are also other performance benefits. Then a second important thing is that not all of these permutations need to protect against the same attacks. So for example, PC uh, just needs to account for some subset of attacks, whereas PE then accounts for another subset of attacks. And these are properties that uh, will help to, to minimize the multiplication count. So this is the mode that we are using in CMinion. Uh, like I said, it's based on Farfalle, but we have made a number of, of changes. And the first change that you see here in, in the red circle is that we have merged the permutations P small c and p small d into one permutation p capital C. So importantly, we don't need this accumulator stage that we saw in the previous uh, slide. And we just need a single permutation pc. And the goal of this pc is to protect or ensure some protection against higher order differential attacks. So it's, it's, it's actually responsible for making sure that the degree is, is large. And I should emphasize that PC is, is called only once, and it doesn't really depend on the number of inputs. Then here in the, in the purple circle, you see that we have truncated the output of the permutation PE. And the idea behind this is that an attacker cannot easily then invert the, the permutation PE because this would involve guessing the part of the output that we have truncated. And this helps, for example, against protection against meet in the middle, uh, meet in the middle style attacks. Then in the orange circle, you see that we have 
moves the key from the output. So that is to say, um, it's no longer added to the plain text, but it's moved to the inside of the mode. And this prevents bypassing the key addition because an attacker is now no longer easily able to consider just differences which bypass the, the key addition. And moreover, we have also increased the number of, of key indeterminates because as we will see, this is something that makes uh, solvers for systems of equations a lot slower because they depend on the number of equations. And in this figure, you see the C minion round function. And it is this round function that is repeated to make up both the permutation PE and the permutation PC, where the difference between the two is in the number of such rounds. An important thing uh, to notice in this round function is that we have used the multiplication. It's our source of nonlinearity. In, in many of the, the previous designs, uh, the nonlinearity came from the fact that a single field element was, for example, qubit, so a, a power map was applied to it. However, a downside of this approach is that it limits the diffusion, and using a multiplication involves uh, different field elements, which is uh, beneficial to the, to the diffusion. And also, the, the multiplication has very good properties in the context of linear and, and differential crypt, crypt analysis. Next, there, there was the choice for a, a linear layer. So even though I've said that uh, nonlinear non operations are expensive and linear operations are cheap, that does not mean that linear operations are for free. In fact, they can have quite a big of an impact in certain protocols. So we have uh, decided to go for a relatively lightweight linear layer. And one of the important things is that we want to make sure that if we consider just a single uh, field element and consider its univariate degree, that also this univariate degree doubles during each call of the round function. And this is why we, you see these, uh, these joints in, in, in this little circuit, because they ensure that, that each field element occurs in many different uh, branches, which make sure that indeed the univariate degree is doubled every time. Then there is uh, the addition of a number of round constants. They are there to, to make sure that um, any symmetries that are present are removed. And of particular interest is this round constant four. It turns out that if you look at uh, the linear properties of the round function, and if you do not include this RC4 and consider fields of characteristic two, then it's possible to find linear approximations that have a linear potential of one, thereby basically breaking uh, this round function. And more importantly, they can be chained. So you could just attack the entire permutation in, in that way. So that's why we have included this RC4 round constant. So that's for the round function. So in this figure, you see the key schedule. Notice that the, the number of keys that we need depends on the number of inputs that we want to encrypt. So it makes sense to have an initial secret and then just derive the keys that we need on the flow, on the fly. Sorry. So we start out with two master keys and an ID, and then uh, use these as input to a sponge construction. And what is important to, to realize here is that the permutations in this sponge construction are the PC permutations. And as I have already hinted at before, these PC permutations will be quite heavy because they are the ones that need to prevent higher order differential analysis. So in fact, the key schedule itself is, is quite a heavy computation. So this is why I, I, I said that um, in order to be competitive, we assume that this key schedule is computed during an offline stage. Now, in order to derive the number of rounds that make up both the permutation PC and PE, we have done some security analysis. So first, we have looked at differential and linear cryptanalysis. Again, the nonlinear component in our round function is the multiplication map, which just multiplies two field, field elements with each other. And 
this multiplication map has very good um, differential and linear properties. Namely, its max dp is equal to 1 over q, where q is just the cardinality of, of the field. So if the field is fp, then that would be p, and if the field is f2 to the power n, then this q would be 2 to the power n. And the maximum linear potential is equal to 1 over q squared. So from this, it, it follows that as, as soon as, as you have one active multiplication, then differential and linear cryptanalysis are no longer a problem. So what does it mean for a multiplication to be active? Well, that basically means that the input difference is non-zero or the input mask is non-zero. So why is it then not a problem? Well, actually our security parameter S is dependent on the, the, the field cardinality. So again, as soon as one uh, multiplication becomes active, these attacks are no longer a problem. However, when what I said during the, um, the slide about the round function is that we need this RC4, because indeed, without this RC4, it's, it's, it's possible to, to, to bypass this multiplication to make sure that it's never active. And yeah, the point here that I'm trying to make is that many people claim that uh, for, these, the, for this kind of cipher, differential linear cryptanalysis are not an issue, but you also need to take the linear layer into account. Then let's look at higher order differential attacks. So in a higher order differential attack, uh, the goal is to find a affine subspace of large enough dimension or a multiplicative subgroup of large enough cardinality such that summing over this affine space or this multiplicative subgroup gives the zero value. So basically it's a kind of zero sum distinguisher. And in order to prevent this kind of attack, you want to make sure that the, the degree of your uh, function representation is quite large, large enough. So the main permutation responsible for the degree growth is this P of C. And again, this P of C consists of the composition of, of the round function, and each round function has degree 2 over FQ. In other words, if we want to make sure that um, our function has degree at least 2 over s, we need to figure out how many rounds we can linearize. It turns out that we can linearize the first two rounds. So from this, it immediately follows that if we have s plus 2 rounds, then uh, pc will have degree 2 to the power s, and these higher order differential attacks are no longer a problem. And as people have done in the past in other papers, we also conjecture that if C minion is secure against higher order differential attacks, then automatically it is secure against interpolation attacks as well. Then we have considered um, Grutner basis attacks. The idea behind a Grutner basis attack is that you represent your cipher as a system of equations, and then the system of equations corresponds to an ideal. And the Grutner basis is a particular kind of generating set for this ideal from which it is easy to, to read off the solutions to your original system of equations. Uh, in general, this, this happens uh, with back substitution. So importantly, the cost of computing a Grotner basis depends on the number of indeterminates in your system of equations, the number of such equations, and their degrees. Now we have considered a number of, of, of strategies that we thought were the most promising. The first one was relating the input to the output. And in this strategy, the attacker has both PC and PE involved. And you can kind of view them as one big permutation, where the number of rounds involved is the sum of the number of rounds of PC plus the number of rounds in PE. And the idea is that each nonce um, is input at, at, at the start. But you don't know that the two key bits, so the, the, the two key elements. So the two keys are actually the indeterminate. So if we then have two nonce inputs, this means that we have actually two equations in two key indeterminates. 
and the goal is to to pick the number r of such rounds for this Gerbner basis computation to be infeasible. So we want uh, uh, so we have actually a system of equations of degree two to the power r, and then we plug this into uh, the, the Gerbner basis uh, cost, and it follows that already by picking for PC the number uh, s plus six for the number of rounds, that's enough to to thwart this this kind of attack. Then the second strategy is uh, relating the intermediate state to the output. So in this case, only the permutation PE is involved. And here we have an, an unknown intermediate state, uh, the state actually after applying PC to the nonce and the two key elements. And the goal of the attacker is to recover this unknown intermediate state, because from that in intermediate state it becomes easy to, uh, to break the system. So what we have done is conjecture that a different kind of, of mode um, is, let's say, easier to, to break than the original mode. So if we can not break the easy mode, then it's also not possible to break the mode that we are actually using. So what we are considering here is a mode in which the, the key addition that is in the middle has been moved to the end again because that allows us to consider differences. And by considering differences, we can remove this key addition at the end. So what do we do? We consider two nonces. And each nonce leads to an unknown state of uh, three unknown elements. So that gives actually three indeterminates. And because we are considering two nonces, we have six indeterminates. And it turns out that we then have a, six, a system of six equations in six indeterminates of degree 2 to the power r minus 1, 2 to the power r, 2 to the power r plus 1, and 2 to the power r plus 2. And by substituting these numbers into the Grotner basis uh, cost equation, we find that if we choose r such that it's at least s plus 37 over 12, then this kind of attack becomes infeas infeasible. And that's then the number of rounds that we choose for this uh, PE permutation. So this gives the following table, where of particular interest is the row in the middle, uh, where we consider a, a data limit of 2 to the power s over 2 elements, where uh, this corresponds to the birthday bound. So for PC, we then have uh, a number of rounds equal to 2 thirds of s plus 6. And for PE, we have the maximum of 6 and S plus 37 over 12. And I just wanted to point out that if you for, choose for S the number 128, which is a kind of standard security level, then the, the number of, of rounds for PC is much, much larger than PE. But PE is not, uh, is not something that you can neglect, because PE is called many different times uh, depending on the number of output words. So... In this table, you see uh, what I showed at the beginning in the graph, but here with concrete numbers. And I would just like to show you the, the, the first row, that of C minion, where in bold it shows you the number of multiplications, which is equal to 14 times t over 2 plus t plus 89. This 89 follows from uh, the number of permutations, sorry, the number of rounds of the number of multiplications of the PC permutation which is called only once. Then for each rolling function in the mode, uh, one multiplication is performed. So that's uh, why we have this t value here. And each PE call has four, around 14 multiplications involved. However, you output also two elements. So that's why you have this, this 14 times two, t over two here. So indeed, we think we are quite competitive. Now, we have done some preliminary security analysis. However, we believe that maybe more can be done, so we encourage you to try and break round-reduced versions of C-Minion. Moreover, we have a version of C-Minion in the paper in which the, the, round, sorry, the, the rolling function is, instead of nonlinear, linear, to maybe even minimize the multiplications uh, further. And we also encourage you to have a look at that. And with that, I would like to conclude this talk, and thank you for your attention.